outback Australia, an unforgiving territory, and a land of amazing creatures, where sometimes nature needs a helping hand. These are the everyday heroes bound by a single mission to save wildlife anywhere, anytime. In this episode of Outback Wildlife Rescue, a thorny devil in a world of trouble and the race to get her back where she belongs. Travelling 1,500 kilometres by plane to come back home. Checking out a snake that's checked in to a hotel. See, that gave you a fry. <laughs> and two special carers. It's got the line coming out, out of her throat. Can they save a pelican with a belly full of bait? Australia is massive and its wildlife diverse. From the tropical Queensland coast to what's called the top end, Darwin and the monsoonal wetlands that surround it. And south through the arid interior to the red deserts of Alice Springs and beyond. Australia's red heart is amazing territory. There are creatures out here unlike anything in the world. Like this thorny devil. It's a mystery how anything so strange came to be. And it's also a mystery how one of those guys ended up 1,500 kilometres away from its home at Alice Springs and found itself here at the Ark Animal Hospital in Darwin. Stephen Cutter is the head vet. That's fantastic. These are my favourite all-time reptile. They're great. A wildlife ranger brought the lizard to the Ark after finding her for sale at the local markets. She's um, been part of my life of taking her off somebody trying to sell her to us. Really? Yeah. Hey. Okay. Now obviously picked her up on the road in Alice Springs. And... Seems someone found her by the highway and drove her north, but she can't survive here. They're just beautiful. These guys are, are specialist anteaters. They just eat ants. That's all, just the little tiny black ants which are everywhere down there. This is uh, her false head. You can see it's got two little horns and it's just a sort of a knob of, of sort of tissue there. You know, if a bird or something comes down and tries to, to eat it, they often will grab that. There's not much Stephen doesn't know about thorny devils, but there's something about this one that doesn't add up. Look how huge she is. She's just absolutely chuckers. She's fat, really fat. He has his suspicions why, but only an X-ray will tell for sure. In southeast Queensland, the wildlife has a unique pair of saviors. Bridget and Paula Powers, known far and wide as the Twinnies. Is that the one that we just released a couple of days ago? They're self-appointed guardian angels for injured seabirds, a two-woman force of nature. There he is, Bridget C. They're pretty amazing and pretty unique. They're, um, I was going to say they're one of a kind. They're, that's probably not the right word. They're regular visitors at the Australian Wildlife Hospital. And today, they've brought in a pelican with an all too familiar problem. This pelican, okay. she's got um, um, internal tackle, tackle and she's got fishing line, line coming, coming out, out from her beak. beak. Yeah. So, so we just hope it's not too far down into her belly. belly. Come on, sweetie. The pelican swallowed a fish hook. Left in, it'll more than likely kill her. Vet John Hanger's seen this all before. Tackle entanglement or ingestion is probably the commonest reason that we see pelicans in. This one's actually swallowed the hook, so it's probably swallowed a piece of bait, you know, with the hook and stuff. Pelicans are Australia's largest flying bird. With a huge wingspan of two and a half metres, they can soar more than three kilometres high and stay aloft for more than 24 hours. Um, so but this one won't be flying anywhere soon. 
Um, what we'll do is we'll knock him out. We're going to take an x-ray to see where the hook is and see if there's any other fishing tackle internally on that top bill, please. If it's right down in the stomach and it's attached, then we may have to operate to get it out. Right. Sometimes we even get pelicans in that are, you know, been slashed by, by knives, you know, because they're going up to fishermen when they're cleaning their fish and trying to pinch them, so they get slashed or stabbed. So the results are far worse than anyone feared. I say this is um, gang hooks where there's three. Three hooks, not one. Her life is hanging in the balance. But can they save her? X-ray. Stevens solved the mystery of the fat thorny devil. This is the X-ray of the thorny devil. Um, she's definitely got eggs inside her. Not only is this little girl half a continent away from home, but she's in the family way too. A little hard to see, but there's at least five eggs that I can see there. Um, otherwise, she looks great. There's no no problems with any of her bones or anything. She's in good health now, but she won't last long in tropical Darwin. Sony devils don't cope with the humidity, um, and so it's really important that she gets back to Alice Springs where it's dry and, um, and desert, the, her country. With eggs on the way, there's no time to waste. She needs to be returned home right now. There's a flight heading south in an hour. But if the thorny devil lays those eggs before she's back in Alice, they won't survive. In the tropics, there's only two seasons that matter, the wet and the dry. As thunderclouds form and the rains arrive, the wildlife becomes more active particularly snakes. And in Catherine, in outback Northern Territory, that means David Reed gets busy too. Reedy is the local wildlife rescue guy. With the call outs, especially for the snakes, like you've got to go at the drop of a hat. Like if someone rings up uh, with a snake in the yard or a snake in their house, as you can imagine, uh, they want it gone uh, right then and there. This afternoon, there's been a call from a motel a snake's checked into one of the rooms. Hi, Jack, is it? Yeah, that's right. You never know what you're in for. It could be, you know, just a harmless children's python, or it could be, you know, a highly venomous western brown. Jackie was cleaning and made the discovery about 10 minutes ago. All right, whereabouts was it? It's in, the, in here, in the double bed. All right, and it's just sitting on the bed there? Yeah, yeah. Right. it was what originally you... under a towel. I lifted the towel to strip the bed, yeah. and there she was, just sitting oh, there. Oh, that gave you a fry. <laughs> yes, what was did. your first reaction? <laughs> <laughs> it's all jokes now, but it's a small room and an unknown snake, and Reedy has to go in there. The pelican swallowed three fish hooks. She needs urgent surgery to save her life. Poor Dana, look at that. Damn and blast. Damn and blast. That's all right. John's removed more fish hooks than he cares to remember. It's never easy. Go to sleep, little one. Just breathe her up a bit, 20. Breathe her up? Yeah, just give her a breath every few seconds. It's such a a poignant um, demonstration of the grief that we cause to wildlife. And of course, because most of the hooks are barbed, it's so easy um, once a, an animal jags itself for it to, you know, the barb to bury in. So what I've done is I've just made a, um, an incision into the abdomen through the, the, the fat to um, just to pull up the stomach. John's found the first hook. There's one hook. They should be all together, shouldn't they? Yeah, oh, they yeah. look pretty close together. Oh, yeah, here comes number two. Number two coming? Yep. So that none of them are attached to each other? Oh, actually, that oh, one wow, is. look. Two of them? Yes. Wow. He's got all three. 
There's just the fishing line left. All right, see if you can yoink that through now. Yeah. It's coming. Good, good, good. Wow. Wow, look That's at it. That's the quickest one one yet. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. That was quick, John. And what a relief. relief. John's done his part, but those hooks were swallowed deep. They can't be sure what damage was done. Now it's up to the twinnies to nurse her back to health. In Alice Springs, the clock's ticking. Justin Rutherford's been called to pick up the egg-laden thorny devil. Lisa got her on the plane with just minutes to spare. Thank you. So I'll see you again. See you. Justin's a wildlife rescue volunteer. He's hoping she hasn't laid her eggs mid-flight. No, she's she's not looking too bad actually, considering the flight down. Um, she's fairly sort of perky looking. Um, she's certainly very heavily grabbed looking at her. Um, you know, when you see your thornies, they're certainly <laughs> never as round and as rotundant as this, if you like. So, she's come through the flight unscathed and still full of eggs, but she needs a drink, and thorny devils have a neat trick for that because these things um, basically use a capillary type action, if you like, to uh, get all this water from their skin up across into their mouth. So I'll just give her a, I'll give her a light spray here and get some water over her. Their skin has evolved to funnel water up to their mouths. Out in the arid desert, they can get a good drink from the morning dew that settles on their body. So she's obviously a little bit thirsty. She's having a bit of a drink there. You can see that little bit of a throat action happening there. She could lay those eggs any moment now. So Justin is going to help her with the delivery. I have to say, looking at the size of her, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if there's eight or ten in there. She's a very round little girl. Um, but we'll just have to wait and see. Keep the fingers crossed that everything goes OK. With the thorny devil safely back in Alice Springs, life goes on at the Ark in Darwin and Gordon's brought in another patient. Yeah, we just found a uh, sick possum in our garden. My well, mum found it. Um, just put it in the um, bag so it wouldn't bite me. And yeah, it's got a weird kind of scaly, pussy skin where all its fur's fallen out. Just thought we'd better bring it in, see what they can do with it, see if they can make it better. Hi, right, Gordon. Do you like to come in through? Chances are it's a northern brush tile, a common uh, possum round Darwin. Just the crook possum mum found today while she was gardening. It's got a, there's something wrong with the skin. They often live in people's backyards, and that can be a bad thing if you like your peace and quiet. Possums are marsupials, which means they carry their young in a pouch and they're renowned for that unearthly call. They live in tree hollows, coming out at night to feed on fruit and leaves or whatever they can steal from your rubbish bin. This one's skin complaint means it's not a happy camper. This is stress dermatitis. Um, it's really common in, in possums. Um, it's what possums actually do to themselves. It's, it's when they, what they do when they get stressed. Yep. Um, it's, they break out in these sores. Um, usually that means that there's not enough places for possums to sleep in your area. Um, mm -hmm. They need um, a hollow log or a hollow tree um, or, or a roof space or somewhere like that to sleep at night. So what this guy is probably been lowered down in the social hierarchy. Yeah, it's quite a small one. So. Yeah, so he's been kicked out and he's having to sleep out in the open and so he's, he's upset about it. And mm. That's why he's broken out in this source. That stress condition can also be brought on by a poor diet or pressure from other possums encroaching on its territory. The good news is it's easily treated with antibiotics. OK, so we'll put him back in his bag. Yep. Oh, okay. 
because he's been a bit feisty, we'll just get his, his, his butt out. I'll let you do that. Okay. Just need his back leg there, and we'll just pop that down to the skin there. Okay. Okay. Alright. Okay. Now that I'll provide him a, a week's worth of antibiotic coverage. Yep. It's going to take a while for those antibiotics to work and the possum's condition to improve. Till then, Gordon's got himself a noisy house guest. The Twinnies are used to animals recuperating at their house. Any given day, they're nursing dozens of birds. Oh, yeah, that's right. No. No, naughty. And with the fish hooks removed, the pelican has taken over the laundry. So we'll take her outside in the table now. Oh, yeah. The Twinnies have cared for more than 500 seabirds in their time, but few have done quite as well as this tough little pelican. We're going to be taking her drip line out and then we're going to um, put a little bit of pressure on it and just put a small bandage on. She's recovered so quick. quick she has recovered so quick. Pelicans eat everything from fish to turtles, lizards or small birds. So before she's released, her stomach needs to be fully healed. There you go, girl. Good girl, you didn't even jump. But the way she's progressing, that won't be long. Ready? Can we come up to the Avery now, darling? In Alice Springs, the thorny devil's time has come. She's laying her eggs. In the wild, she'd be hidden away, a metre under the desert sand. Generally, you're never going to see it. She's down in the ground laying her eggs. Once she's done, she's backfilling as she comes back out. So, um, yeah, to, to come in here and I'll have this girl laying eggs in front of me like this, it's just yeah, fantastic, absolutely fantastic. Thorny devils aren't great mums. They leave their eggs as soon as they're laid, relying on the heat in the earth to incubate them. Now, that's Justin's job. We're going to get these out fairly quickly. She buries them, hopes for the best, basically. Um, so all we're doing is trying to uh, simulate that similar environment to what they would be in the, under the ground. So I'll get these into the incubators, guys. Fingers crossed, like I say, three months. Cute little babies. So. There's just one last adventure left for the thorny devil. Justin's going to release her back into the wild. Reedy's adventure is just starting. He's got to catch a snake in this cabin. We're heading into an unknown situation. We know the snake's in the room, uh, it's on the bed, but we don't know what sort of species it is yet. So as we go in, uh, we'll go in nice and safe, exercise caution, uh, and hopefully catch and remove the snake safely. Oh, he's sitting right there, are you, mate? <laughs> Oh, right. at home, isn't he? It's a banded tree snake. If you have to find a snake in your bed, the banded tree snake is probably the one you want. They're common across the top end. And while they are venomous, to an adult human, the bite is no worse than a bee sting. What we'll do, we'll have a look at him. The biggest thing with snakes, when they're the most nervous, is actually when you first approach them. So you want to be nice and gentle, let him know you're not going to hurt him, yeah. uh, and just support his body weight. So uh, we'll get him over here. All right. Banded tree snakes are really agile climbers. Uh, you know, the way their body is made, uh, like, you know, really long, uh, slender snake and that yeah. triangular-shaped body. A lot of your snakes, uh, you know, have a rounded body, uh, and that allows him, you know, to really use the most of his muscles and to really easily climb trees that we can only dream of. Reedy's prone to bouts of enthusiasm about snakes, and Jackie's going to learn a thing or two about this guy, whether she likes it or not. You can see that he's got his big boggly head and his big buff eyes. So the bigger the eyes, uh, you know, the more light that he can take in. Uh, that just allows him, you know, to be active at night and, you know, to actively hunt his prey. So he would have gone out there, uh, you know, looking for a feed. 
uh, and then, you know, hitched the ride back in on someone's towel. So hopefully yeah. at the time, uh, you know, they didn't have it wrapped around them or anything like that, because it could have been a nasty surprise. It's time the snake checked out at this hotel. Reedy will find him somewhere more like home and release him. Outside town, he knows a place that should suit just fine. This location's ideal for the release of this species. Uh, one of the things that you can obviously hear in the background is the cicadas. Cicadas are an insect like a large grasshopper. The males make a piercing singing noise. You can not only hear the cicadas, but you can see them. Uh, all that sort of the water or you know rain that looks like it's dripping from the sky, uh, that's actually cicada urinating. Uh, so there's probably hundred, if not thousands, or more, uh, you know, in this area just around us. Uh, and what the cicadas do, they bring in the birds, uh, and in turn, the snake goes after the birds. So we'll let him go uh, in the tree. You can see uh, how well their body is adapted to climbing. Uh, he really makes it look like it's easy and light work, although there's not really a lot for the snake to grip on. So where he's sitting now, uh, he's gotten a bit of advantage, a bit of a, you know, a viewing point. He's happy to sit there. Uh, he feels like he's high enough off the ground. Uh, feels nice and safe, nice and secure, uh, and a hell of a lot safer than where he was where we found him. It's been a few weeks since Gordon brought the stressed out possum to the ark. Now he's back for a checkup. Hey Steve. Hi oh, Gordon, how you going? It's not bad, it's not bad. So who have we got here? Uh, just the possum that brought in. Uh, Gordon's kept up her antibiotics and given her a safe home with plenty of food. And the change to her skin condition is nothing short of amazing. Okay. Okay. Oh, she's looking good, isn't she? She's been doing well. She's been eating and... Yeah, eating like a champion. champion. Great. Can hardly keep enough food up to her. Even better, she's cut out the screeching. Let's have a look at your face. So they've got constantly growing teeth like uh, rabbits. Um, they need to constantly gnaw, um, and those teeth are nice and good and healthy. Um, she did used to have sort of... Uh, 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 dermatitis all over her face here. Um, you can just see there's a little bit of scarex of it left there and a little bit of loose skin and dandruff there. Um, and that's held up really well. She's quite popular amongst the male possums that are around our joints. So, so she'll probably be popular when she gets, yeah. <laughs> get, gets released. But, well, she looks great. She's healed really well. Um, she'll be right for release. So, Excellent. Yep. Um, so you can release her tonight if you want. So, Brilliant. No worries. Um, so you'll be right with that? Yep. No, she can go back in the tree. Possums are highly territorial, so Gordon's going to let this one go on home turf, his own backyard. She won't have to fight for her place here, and he's given her another head start, tying pipes high in the branches so she's got a ready-made home. Right, here we go. Off you go, sweaty. That's uh, pretty good. Timing's just about perfect. It's going to go dark pretty soon, so that'll give her all night to find one of these hollows to go and live in. I'm actually quite happy with that. It's worked out well. Good. You beauty. There's a happy ending at Biawa, too. In under a month, the pelican's fully recovered from swallowing those fish hooks, and she's ready to be released. Now, look at all your friends, friends out, out there. there waiting for you. The twinnies mark her wings, so they'll recognise her if she turns up sick again or takes another bite of fishing line. No getting tangled up anymore. It wasn't a good sight, was it? Ready? Yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> Come on, darling. With luck, she could live well into her 20s. Now it's time to rejoin her flock. Good luck, little girl. Yeah. Good luck, darling. Mwah. Yeah. See you, sweetie. There you go, darling. 
It took three months, but all the effort paid off in Alice Springs. Not all the thorny devil's eggs survived, but three did hatch, producing tiny replicas of mum. Of course, by then, she was long gone. Her 3,000 kilometre round trip from Alice to Darwin and back again ended with a car ride into the red dunes where she'd come from. Justin found a place with everything she needed to live a long and happy life. We've got low-lying shrubs, we've got the spin effects around. The perfect environment for the, for the ants that she's eating as well. Um, it's just absolutely perfect for her. OK, gorgeous. Here we go. Hey, sweetie. Now, are you going to be behaving? You're going to run? Are you going to do your thing for me or not? Come on. Oh, yeah, gorgeous. Off you go. Go on. Off you go. Where are you running? Go on. Go on. That's the way. All the time that goes into this, I mean, this animal in particular, you know, travelling 1,500 kilometres by plane to come back home, you know, plus the, the days of anticipation, you know, waiting for it to be comfortable, um, getting it fed, uh, it's just, there's no bigger reward. It would have been a lot worse for the snake, which would have eventually ended up in the washing machine. If we had a pelican, I don't think there's any other carer that I would feel as comfortable with having as the 20s. Oh, these are always the perfect endings for these animals. Uh, just getting them back out there where they belong. 